Let's talk about arsenic poisoning. So arsenic is absorbed through ingestion or inhalation. Dietary sources can include contaminated well water or rice, and industrial sources can include semiconductors, mining, smelting, and glass making, among others. It affects the peripheral nervous system, the heart, the skin, the liver, and the kidneys. So in the first week of a acute arsenic poisoning, you can have nausea, vomiting, and watery diarrhea, and you can have so much that it leads to dehydration and hypotension. Sometimes in the question they'll give you a clue and say that there's a garlic odor in the breath. There can also be QTC prolongation and arrhythmias, just such as torsades and there can also be renal injury, hematuria, and proteinuria. For subacute to chronic toxicity, so after the first week you might have painful sensory motor peripheral neuropathy and this can begin with distal paresthesias that progress proximally. You can have hepatitis or pancytopenia in the first few weeks and then chronically you'll have skin changes including hypo or hyperpigmentation and characteristically there can be keratosis and scaling on the palms and soles. You can also chronically develop skin carcinomas as well as mise lines. Mise lines are horizontal white lines across the nails such as seen here. And arsenic poisoning is also associated with other carcinomas as well. So the diagnosis depends on getting a urine arsenic level. So the reason that a urine arsenic level is done is because blood arsenic is cleared too rapidly. So the test of choice is either a spot or 24 hour urine creatinine and total arsenic with the 24 hour urine collection being more accurate. The diagnosis is made if the urine arsenic level is above 50 micrograms per liter or above 100 micrograms per gram of creatinine. Uh, arsenic speciation should be done because sometimes other things in the diet such as fish or seaweed can lead to elevations in total arsenic, but the fish and seaweed actually contain non-toxic arsenic species, so for this reason arsenic speciation should be done if the total arsenic level is high. If possible, patients should also be counseled to refrain from eating fish or seaweed for two or three days prior to getting this test. However, that's not always possible to be done. An EKG should be checked to look at the QTC interval and peripheral neuropathy uh, we'll have an axonal pattern on nerve conduction studies, although it's not usually urgent to get this. Uh, other studies that should be checked, including uh, LFTs and the UA, as well as CBC and electrolytes. For treatment, chelation can be given prior to test results, especially in acute toxicity where we have the most data. The two FDA-approved treatments are succimer, or DMSA, and dimercaprol, or British antileucite. And the goal of treatment is to reduce the 24-hour urine arsenic level to normal, or below 50. Other mainstays of treatment include removing sources of arsenic from the patient, including clothes, and removing uh, him from the environment where the arsenic was ingested or inhaled. IV fluids and repleting electrolytes are also important, especially because the acute toxicity can cause dehydration, and cardiac monitoring is important to detect for arrhythmias.